Members of an online message board that housed extremist content are looking for new homes. The site 8chan was shut down earlier this month. It has been linked to at least three mass shootings this year, including the attack in El Paso, Texas. 8chan served as a go-to resource for violent extremists to promote white nationalist ideas. However, taking down the site is now driving users to other platforms. One of them is called Discord. For more, CNET senior producer Dan Patterson joins me now on set. So, Dan, first of all, if you could explain what exactly is Discord and what has it been used for in the past? Elaine, Discord is a chat application. It's a mobile app. It's mm -hmm. great. It's in the iOS app store. It's in the Android app store. You can log into it on your web browser. It's very useful. It acts just like Slack. If you're in the workplace, you might have used Slack to communicate with your teams. Discord is very similar. It is for gamers and gaming, and I use it routinely. We play Dungeons and Dragons game <laughs> using Discord on a regular basis. It is inherently on... Uh, itself is not a uh, bad app. Mm -hmm. There are good purposes for Discord. So explain then, why is it that 8chan users in particular are gravitating towards Discord? What is it about Discord that makes it attractive to those 8chan users? Well, Elaine, the design could not be more dissimilar. If you look at a screenshot of 8chan and a screenshot of Discord, they look very different. But the features and functionality, Elaine, that's What's important here, one, anonymity. Users can log in using any name you want. If you go to 8chan, or at least what used to be 8chan, you didn't even have to log in, so you could be effectively anonymous. Now, there is a log of your IP address, and Discord has this, but they won't surrender it without a subpoena. Same with 8chan, and most web services operate like this. The other feature that is really interesting, Elaine, is the ability to spin up private communities. Now, Discord, the jargon, the language is a server, but really these are just private chat rooms mm -hmm. where you invite your friends. So my friends, for example, we have a private chat room that six or eight of us use every month to play Dungeons and Dragons. Mm -hmm. It's pretty innocuous. World of Warcraft players mm -hmm. use it to play World of Warcraft. Sounds it's super fun. fun Dan right. It is super fun. Okay. However, these private chat rooms, just like in 8chan, can be spun up very quickly with no technical expertise. They can be deleted or destroyed just as quickly. So if you spin something up, for example, with a hateful username, and we found dozens of instances of those, it's easy to delete them once you get discovered. It's also very easy, Elaine, to back up the users and the archive of that group. So this means that if your room is discovered or if you decide to delete it, you can archive, export all of your users and take them with you. Wow. And, you know, some people might say, OK, that's really interesting. Is there some kind of connection here potentially between the gaming community and this extremist content? Well, there have been, uh, sadly, connections between the gaming community and extremists for a long time. In fact, Steve Bannon identified uh, some of the more extremist or toxic elements of gaming or gamers over 10 years ago. And a number of news organizations, including The Wall Street Journal, Slate, us here at CBS News and others have documented the connection between white supremacists and gamers for a long time. You can see some of this on YouTube. You can see some of this in gaming chats inside the games themselves. And of course, you can sadly see this inside Discord where you will see chats for Fortnite or for Minecraft right next to hardcore pornography right next to the Nazi flag and next to the most racist bad language that mm -hmm. you, you can't imagine saying, let alone typing out to someone else. And so, I mean, those sound like extremely disturbing examples of the kinds of things you found on Discord. Again, these are areas, though, where you have to get invited to these. And then what happens if Discord finds out and shuts them down? In a matter of, what, hours, they're back up and running again? Yeah, so we spoke to Discord through the course of reporting this story, and they are disturbed by the content that exists on their platform, although they do say that every website, every social media service has an unfortunate amount of bad content on it. And they do kind of the same thing that many tech companies do. Uh, they use what they call machine learning. This is artificial intelligence to look for particular keywords or types of behavior. They also use human content moderators. However, there is a real cost to human content moderators. Uh, and look, I can tell you through the course of reporting this story, Elaine, I saw some of the worst things. People talking about 
bad things to animals, let alone other people, let alone words and symbols. So as a reporter, being exposed to this was pretty challenging. But I can only imagine that if your job is to look at this all day, every day, eight hours a day, it, it must be very, very challenging. So there are no clear-cut solutions. There would potentially be a technology solution using what's called an application programming interface. This mm -hmm. is the API. So Discord can build AI on top of this that looks for bad behavior. Mm -hmm. At the same time, though, Elaine, I want to make sure that something is really clear, and that is the bots, the uh, automated pieces of software that Discord allows to be written on top of their platform mm -hmm. that many of us use for pretty basic tasks mm -hmm. are also used to make sure that these communities perpetuate so that when they are banned or when communities are abandoned, the user groups can be exported, and that is precisely what we have found. Well, it'll be really fascinating to see if anything changes the more people sort of find out and understand what's at play here, whether or not perhaps some of these policies change, right? Dan Patterson, some really important reporting. Dan, thank you so much. Good to see you.